Here we have an Asus ZenBook 14 that came in for no power. We already removed the back cover on the laptop and we're going to see if we can figure out the problem without having to disassemble the whole board. Most of the components that we are interested in are on the surface and not on the bottom. We're going to start with the charging connector right here and we should see two power MOSFETs right next to the connector. We see the screen LCD cable here. And I do not see the power MOSFETs. They must be on back of the board. We should still be able to test somewhere on front of the board without having to remove the motherboard. I mean, it only takes us five minutes to remove the board, but let's see if we can figure it out without having to remove the board. Let's measure those caps. Zero ohms. Oh, zero ohms on both sides. One side should be ground and the other side should be a high value. But we are reading zero ohms on both caps. Let me go to diet mode to see what readings we get. And we have a short. And if I am to guess, I would go for this cap. It looks a bit off from here. That may or may not be the problem, but it's the first thing I see when inspecting the board. And same problem, zero ohm on both sides. I mean, we're going to take a shot in the dark without wasting any time. I always like to do things as fast as possible. And when I say as fast as possible, not do a bad job, but try to figure out the issue quick. Maybe we can start with this cap here since it does not look too good. The cap may be good, but we're going to start with this one. Right now, I did not even use our thermal camera yet, but let's see if we can figure it out without the need to use a thermal camera. Fume extractor on. And do we still have a short? That's the question. If not, then the job is done. And we still have a short. Is it a zero ohm short? Go to ohms mode. Measure here. Zero ohms. And zero ohms. So the problem is likely not this cap. It's not likely, it's 100% unlikely that the problem is this cap. So we're going to put it back and we'll remove this one. This cable is bothering me. Let me just take it out. And let's see, do we still have a short? Okay, so zero ohms here, and we have zero ohms here. And one thing I'm going to do also is remove this component quick, like that. And now we're going to measure. If we still have a short, then the next component in question is this one here. Let me go to diode mode, and we're going to measure here. We have a short. And we have a short. So we're going to put all those components back. I'm using a small tip. We need a bigger tip for more heat transfer. And we're going to be using this one here. Look at this.
And if this guy is the problem, I do not have that chip in stock unless I'm able to find it off another donor board. Well, we're going to remove the chip and we're going to check to see if we still have a short. If not, then that's our problem. Do we still have a short? And we still have a short. So now is the time to use the thermal camera. When tough gets going, going gets tough. Or when going gets tough, tough gets going works both ways. So I'm gonna mark the chip right here. And I'm gonna mark right here. So we know the chip should be on the top. We are measuring a short on this fuse. Weird, right? Because a fuse should never measure a short. What we can do is we can inject voltage at the fuse and see what gets hot on the board. We're going to keep the chip off the board for now. Let's measure one more time. Yeah, you see? We have a short at the fuse. And of course, we're going to have a short here at the cap. We know we have a short circuit. Usually, I inspect the board under a thermal camera and we figure it out in half a second. But today, I tried to flex my muscles without using a thermal camera and I failed. I wanted to show you that it can be done without using a thermal camera. And it can be done if you don't have a thermal camera, but with the thermal camera, it will be a lot faster. So we're gonna use our voltage injection tool. And I went over this device in a previous video. You can look, you can look up nf.short, one of the best voltage injection tools that I've worked with. We're gonna put one probe on ground and I do have an extension for my probe right here. I can connect this to any ground area on the board. And then with the other probe, I can inject voltage at the fuse. And look at this, we are drawing 2.7 amps at 1.6 volts. Let me grab the thermal camera quick. Whoa, look at this. Somewhere right here. One more time. Right there, we got it. So we're gonna apply alcohol in this area and we're gonna see where alcohol evaporates first. And it's obvious, alcohol evaporated of this component and we can see a crack on that capacitor. We still have isopropyl here, 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 but it's evaporating first on this component. Let's go ahead and do it one more time. You see? So the short is coming from right over here and I was working all the way next to the charging port right here. Without a thermal camera, it's impossible, almost impossible, to know where that short is coming from, unless you want to spend a lot of time. But we got it. With the help of the thermal camera, we were able to pinpoint that the short is coming from here. And of course, with the help of isopropyl, we pinpointed where that short is coming from. Let's go ahead and remove the cap. And then we're going to measure again for a short. I still have the chip off the board, but we're going to put it back. I mean, who would have thought that somewhere in the middle of the board, we have a component that is causing a short? Who would have thought? And that's why it's very important for every technician or every hobbyist to have a thermal camera. 
because it makes the difference between fixing the device or not fixing the device. And we currently carry and sell one of the best thermal cameras for the money, the UNI-T 260B. You can log in to northwishfix.com, click on shop, and you can find it there along with the macro lens. We are also a distributor for genuine Amtec Flux. We sell everything from hot air station, soldering station, the amazing microscope that I'm using right here, along with the articulating arm, ring light, anti-glare light, multimeter, charging stations, voltage injection tool, the same one I used here, multimeter probes, everything. Whatever you need, you can log in, add to cart, check out, and we almost always ship out the next day or even same day. If your order came in in the morning, most likely it will ship out same day. We have everything in stock. And don't forget the fume extractor. Very important to have a fume extractor. You do not want to inhale the fumes. I just turned mine on. And we're going to get rid of the bad guy. This guy right here. Now let's measure for a short again. Meter in diet mode. It would be funny if we still have a short after all that talk, right? And the short is gone. <laughs> wow. See? You can hear the multimeter beep in diet mode. The short is gone. And if we go to resistance mode, we should get a very large value, 192 kilo ohms and not zero ohm. Awesome. We got it. We're going to put the chip back. We're going to replace the capacitor and we should be back in business. Let's solder that chip back on. The customer is paying for expedited service so we can do it for him as soon as possible. We got the laptop in today and hopefully it will work after replacing the cap. And of course, we're going to then invoice the customer and we're going to mail it back to him as soon as we receive the payment. And where is that beautiful chip? And I'm sorry, chip, we accused you of wrongdoing but you are clean, out of jail. We got it. And we're done. The cap is soldered on nicely and we are done. And hopefully this laptop will power on. Otherwise all that talk went for nothing. Let's plug the battery in. And I do not even know if that battery is charged or not, but we're gonna find out. And we're going to have to plug the screen cable, but you know what, let me disconnect the battery. We're going to plug the screen cable and then we'll connect the battery. We do not want to have any issues with the backlight, so always disconnect the battery first. Screen cable is connected. And the battery is connected. And will it power on? We may need a charger if the battery is dead.
and it looks like the battery is dead. Okay, let me grab a charger quick. I have a charger here. The customer did not mail a charger over with the laptop, but we do have ours. Plug the charger in. And are we going to get a working laptop? I do see the power light right here. We want to see something on the screen. A white LED is not enough. We see a white and orange LED right here. So that's a good thing. Oh, right there. <laughs> Done. Fixed. Awesome. We did it. Wow. We did it. And I can try to unplug the cable. Maybe the laptop charged up for a few seconds. If the charging circuit is working. Before we were not able to turn the laptop on battery power. But we do see the orange light on the side here. So it means the battery is taking a charge. Unplug quickly. Yes. Yes. It should go off in a second because the battery did not have a chance to charge. But we know the charging circuit is working. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.